friends. You want a speech, but I cannot make one at this time. I must have opportunity to think. Undue importance might be given to what I said. However, there is one thing I will do. You have a band with you. There's one piece of music I've always liked. Heretofore, it hasn't seemed the proper thing to use it in the North. But now, by virtue of my prerogative as president and uh, commander-in-chief of the Army and Navy, I declare it contraband of war and our lawful prize. I ask the band to play Dixie. <laughs> But I'm just a bubbling over with affection and ready to pour it all over uh, like apple sash over rose pork. <laughs> you have not the good manners of society, and for that reason alone, I forgive the impertinence of which you are guilty. Oh, I don't know the manners of society. Hey, just a minute, sir. I think I know enough to turn you inside out, old gal. You sock dodging old man trap. <laughs> myself some awfully bad names. <laughs> <laughs> you know, friends, $400,000 is a big peel pile of money to light a man's cigar with. <laughs> Get across the Potomac, sir. We won't be safe till we're in Virginia. I can't do it. Hey, you! Inside that cabin there! Come here, boy! Yes, sir, Captain! Do you know if any doctor lives around here? Doctor? Yes, sir. I knows one, Dr. Mudd. Dr. Sam Mudd. He lives just around that bend. Can I help you, boss? No. No, get out. Get out! Come on.
at the door. Oh, it's the stork. Looking for Aunt Roosevelt's cabin. I've been waiting for him. Well, if the stork hasn't learned his way to Aunt Roosevelt's after 11 visits, he never will learn. 11? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. Look, don't you and Martha have breakfast till I get back. No. I want to eat with you. And plenty of batter cakes, too, because I'm going to be hungry. And keep it turned up, too, because it's yeah. raining out. Dr. Mudd? Yes? His, his leg's broken. Can you, can you do something for him? Yes. Let's get him inside. Sorry here to have to cut your boot. I know it hurts. Hurry, please, hurry. I've got to be going. No, no, not on that leg. You've got a bad transverse fracture there. You, you'll be lucky if you're on that in a week. Uh, just fix it the best you can. Hurry. See, I haven't got any regular splints here, but... Take it easy, Bill. Coming down from Washington? No, from uh, uh, Baltimore. <laughs> I'd certainly like to finish the White House last Sunday when, when old Abe asked the band to play Dixie. I guess old Abe's all right after all. Looks to me like he's the only salvation we Southerners can look for. Him and, and God's mercy. I never thought anybody but, but doctors had to be out at this hour of the night. His Mother's dying, over in Virginia. Oh, I'm so sorry, sir. Where's that, uh, that knife? Oh, there. Now I'm gonna... Oh, dear, get some brandy, will you? Now I'm gonna set this leg. First, I want to give you a good stiff drink of brandy. You think you can stand it? Thank you. Now, it'll only take a second or two. Now, easy now. Easy now. There. There. You know, I think it's downright foolish trying to travel on a leg like that. Look, I could put you up in a spare room. How much do I owe you? Oh, I don't know. Two, two dollars will cover it. Thank you. Oh, say, look, wait a minute. I, I want to give you a prescription. Now, this is going to help to ease that pain. It's a sedative. I want you to get it filled now as soon as you can. Thank you, Doctor. You've done me a great service. And I'm sorry if I seemed rude or abrupt. Well, things like that can't matter, Doctor. He's, his door's got to be open day and night. Good night, Teddy. Well, say, I do wish you'd change him. Mm, queer sort of, sort of snake, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. How much? Huh? How much? Good heavens! Fifty dollars! Oh, Sam, there must be some mistake. Shall I call him back or... or lock the door? Lock it, lock it, and bar it, too. Huh. And yeah, to think I called him a snake. As a matter of fact, he's probably a very kindly old philanthropist, just looking around for deserving families like us. At five o'clock in the morning. Of course. Well, philanthropists don't care what time it is. Say, so you know what he probably thought? 
He probably said to himself, now, here's a pretty good couple. Of course, he don't amount to much. Just a country doctor, but, but his wife. Crazy. <laughs> Poor little thing. Pretty as a picture, too. Tied up to that country pill peddler, stuck way down here in the piney woods. Probably just as unhappy as she could be, so I'll, I'll just give him $50. Oh, he thought no such thing. All right, all right. What do you think he thought? He probably said to himself, well, my goodness, here's the luckiest woman I've ever seen. She's got the sweetest child in the whole world. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. How do you know that? Philanthropists know everything. <laughs> and as for her husband, well, no matter how far out in the country he may live, he set my leg better than any New York specialist could do it. So I'll just make this his lucky day and pay him $50. Well, that's what he aimed to do, give us a lucky day. He certainly know how to start it right. Well, it was nice while we had it. She's ready for you now. She sure is ready for you now. Ah, the store. Huh? It's here. My Sam, and Rosabella ain't gonna have no stock, is she? You, come here. You're the man said his buggy was stolen last night? Yes, horse and buggy. Took it right out of my barn. Which way did the tracks go? Well, they turned off up that way. And they must have come from that way. Well, we're on the right track so far. Who lives up that road? Dr. Mudd. Samuel A. Mudd. Shall we try him? Sure, we'll try everybody. It's dead certain he got help from somebody in this neighborhood. Well, what about him? Arrest him. Take him down to Washington. Here. But I tell you, it was not a question of slavery. and never was. It was a question of states' rights. The Constitution of the United States laid down certain fundamental truths, I guess. And one of them was that the individual state had a right to secede at any time it so chose. But what happens? Did, what in thunder's that? Ask just how many grits. Yeah, uh, how many grits flies all over everything. Where's your mom? She hasn't got up yet. Well, where's your Paul? He's out. What? Who's sick now? At Roosevelt, I think. What? What is Roosevelt? Huh? Oh. Okay, honey. W would you mind leaving the room for a minute? Why? Because your grandpa says so. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, you now, run along. No, shoo, no. shoo. Yes, yeah, shoo, shoo to you. Shoo, shoo. Get out of here. Well, what about Roosevelt? Roosevelt wanted to have a baby. Yeah, uh, did her uh, I got, how many is that? She said 12. Yeah, 12. Uh, my God, what's Roosevelt trying to do? Start a whole new generation by herself? Sorry, sir, but is this Dr. Mudd's home? It is. I guess. Where is Dr. Mudd? Who wants to know? Lieutenant Lovett, United States Army. I am Dr. Mudd's father-in-law. Colonel Jeremiah Milford Dyer, 4th Virginia Cavalry, Confederate States Army, sir. Yeah, uh... Well, then, maybe you'll help us, sir. We're looking for two men who passed through this part of Maryland last night. One of them was hurt. Had a bad leg. Broken, probably. Did you see or hear anything of them? If you will order that animal to keep his filthy Yankee nose out of my affairs, I may answer you. Oh, wait outside, Sergeant. In front. Uh, 
Have you ever heard of John Wilkes Booth? Never. He's quite a well-known actor. Yeah, actor. I got your I leave actors to women. Rock, go by, Obie. Oh, you were a woman who didn't miss you. You had to make sure she didn't know what to do, so she spanked him and put them to the band. Howdy, little Johnny Reb. What do you call that? That's my dolly's carriage. Huh. It's the first time I ever saw a dolly's carriage with a spur on it. Now look, you've broken my dump. Oh, we can fix that here. Oh, I've done this lots of times. This will be easy. And if I had my way, I gad I'd line up every damn blame official of the North, sir, and have them shot. Yes, sir. Have them shot. And are these the sentiments of your son-in-law? My son-in-law, sir, is a southerner. Then with your permission, Colonel, or without it, we'll wait here for him. But... Colonel, stay here and sit down. You colored brothers have got to realize that you're no longer slave. You're free men. Then you're as good as any white man in the state of Maryland. The right to vote is yours, and it's up to you to take it. Whoa. Don't let him think he can scare you. You're just as good as he is. You're as good as any white man. Wait a minute. Who gave you permission to come on my land and take my hands away from the work? You can't bluff me, Mud. You're a slaver, and you always have been. You're going to get off my place, or you want to be thrown off. These colored men are my friends. Go on, throw them off. Get back! Keep away! Don't you dare lay your black hands on a white man! Well, Captain, you've just been telling us that we're as good as you is. <laughs> Get back to your cabin. Roosevelt's baby's born. Yes, you, sir. Well, what kind I got this time, sir? A fine-looking boy. Strong as a bull. <laughs> Come on, get it. I vow and do declare. Ha <laughs> ha, another boy. That Roosevelt sure do have a lot of children, don't you, Ma Sam? <laughs> you hear that news? <laughs> Well, whose big girl is this coming to meet her daddy, huh? It's Martha. <laughs> what, honey, you, you've been crying. Wait a minute. Who made my big girl cry? The soldier broke my dolly. See? Boy, darling, no, no. There, there aren't any soldiers around here. You ought to know that. <laughs> Peggy. Oh, Peggy. Good morning. Good morning, nothing. Don't speak to the filthy Yankee hounds. I can't come bust into the man's home here when he's eating his vittles. Dr. Mudd? Yes? Do you know John Wilkes Booth? Well, I've seen him. I... Yes, I've seen him on a stage in Washington. Would you recognize him if you saw him on the street? Well, I suppose so. Yes, yes, I believe I would. Was he here last night? Of course not. Bring Mrs. Mudd down. If, if you harm my... Say, what's the meaning of all this? You can't even guess, I suppose, huh? Sam! What does this mean? What are they going to do? Now, will you be good enough to tell us? Certainly. Dr. Mudd is under arrest for conspiracy in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Curry 
managed to hang these murderers of Abraham Lincoln. We'll hang them. Yeah. Let's get them now. We're in the crater. Yeah. Gentlemen, Mr. Erickson, the Assistant Secretary of War. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. I suppose you all realize that as members of the court-martial for the trial of the conspirators in the assassination of our beloved president, you have on your souls a grave responsibility. We realize it very deeply, Mr. Secretary. The object of this trial is not to determine the guilt or innocence of a handful of rebels, but to save this country from further bloodshed. The solemn truth, gentlemen, is that the Federal Union is on the verge of hysteria. That is why the trial of these conspirators has been placed in your hands rather than in a civil court. Because men of the sword can be hard. And hardness is all that can save this country from riots mob rule, even a resumption of the war itself. Have you any suggestions, sir? Two, to help you to be hard. First, you must not allow your judgment and decision in this case to be troubled by any trifling technicalities of the law or any pedantic regard for the customary rules of evidence. Second, and most important, you must not allow yourself to be influenced by that obnoxious creation of legal nonsense, reasonable doubt. Is that clear? Yes. yes clear. Briefly, the voice of this court has got to be the voice of the people. Before you start, I want you to hear that voice. Listen to it. This court is now in session. Mr. President. The Judge Advocate General. The death of John Wilkes Booth who was shot down while resisting arrest in Virginia, has left us eight members of his criminal band. So, in the name of the government of the United States, the crime of assassination and conspiracy to assassinate Abraham Lincoln, then President of the United States, is charged against the following. David E. Harrell, Lewis Payne, George A. Atzeroth, Michael Laughlin, Edward Spangler, Samuel Arnold, Mrs. Mary E. Surratt, <laughs> and Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Mudd? I'm General Ewing. With your permission, I should like to act as your counsel. Thank you, General. Thank you. We'll fight together now, as we once fought each other. Thank you. With the permission of the court, we will begin the cases in order. 
We will start with the charge against George J. Atzeroth. <laughs> Any kind of news you can give us about, about Dr. Mudd? That's all they're going to tell, lady. Just what you see on the board. That's War Department's orders. War Department's orders. Ha! Didn't know they had one. Shh. Well, that's that bling. will now present its case against Dr. Samuel A. Martin. Tell him I've got to speak. I've got to defend myself. I, I can't let them treat me the way they've treated all these others. General Ewing, you will instruct the defendant to remain silent and respect this court. I'm confident, Mr. Erickson, that after observing the conduct of these trials, Dr. Mudd's respect for this court is every whit as great as my own. Frank J. Thomas will take the stand. Tell the court what you know of Dr. Mudd's loyalty to the Federal Union. Dr. Mudd was a diagnosed slaver. Yes, sir. Slaver. Dr. Mudd's name was on the prescription, which I failed. Dr. Mudd served in the Confederate Army. Dr. Mudd denied that he'd ever seen Booth. Dr. Mudd denied everything until I showed him Booth's own boot right in his own home. Dr. Mudd, when I examined him in prison, confessed to me that he set Booth's broken leg and then aided him with directions how to reach the Potomac and Virginia. The case is ended. No! No! The case is not ended. Here's one defense you're going to hear whether you want it or not. The prisoner will observe order. Why? Why? What more can you do to me? What threat have you got left? You can hang me. You can hang us all, the innocent as well as the guilty. Because you, you nine gallant officers and gentlemen, have stripped yourselves of your pride, your honor. But I'll not go without fight. I'll not go without trying to blacken your memories with the insane injustice. You'll carry on the souls till the day you die. And till the day you die, you ask yourselves in your heart three questions. Does an assassin confide his plans to anyone? Was I a physician? In the plot, because it was part of John Wilkes Booth plan to break his leg and, and to need me? Does a man whose first devotion is no longer to a lost cause or to any flag that flies, but to his wife and his child, risk any act that could only cause misery and heartbreak on their innocent lives? In the sight of the holy God I worship, I am innocent. The court will ignore the remarks of the prisoner. can't tell me what they've decided. Lady, I must have told you 40 times that I don't know any more than them bulletins. She's coming. 
coming now. Oh, but General, isn't, isn't there any, any possible means of, of, of stopping things? Just for a little while anyway. My child, I'm using every legal means that I know of. Oh. Be brave, my dear. I'll be back together again. Don't. Sam, don't you know? Haven't they told you? Told me what? You mean that you've heard? Sam, the verdict was guilty. Nightmare, the way you can't fight, you can't run, you can't do anything. All the time is coming toward you. Oh, but darling, we haven't given up. We're not through, mm -hmm. not yet. Okay, no, we're not giving up. You and Martha and me. But if Daddy has to stay away a little while longer, I want you to take care of Mama. You know, dry her tears, try to make her happy. Tell her, too, that in the in the bottom drawer of the roll top desk, there are a lot of old bills, bills that, well, Daddy never got around to collecting them. Maybe they'll get enough, though, to send you to school, buy some new dresses. Try not to forget Daddy, won't you? Oh, Come on, come on. Let's go. Not giving up. Not yet, dear. Hey, bring him downstairs. My cell is here. <laughs> you ain't going to need a cell anymore. I'll see General Hunter. Oh, I know him very well. Martha. the best place in the yard, lady. Over yonder's where they're coming out. <laughs> Courage. Courage, my dear.
looks like that's all. He's going to live. Live. Present. Yes, the show's over. What about him? Life imprisonment on dry Tartucas. New bunch from Washington prison, sir. Hard one. Report them to the officer of the guard. Yes, sir. Bud, number six. Subordination, striking an officer, ten years. Zev, step! Next, Otto Lerman. Otto Lerman, desertion, twenty years. You'll never make it, Otto. You're too old. <laughs> the mosquitoes will get you. Left step! Next. Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. Dr. Mudd, I've been waiting for you. So all they gave you was life. Couldn't hang you, huh? Well, by Judas, you're gonna wish the head for I'm through with you. Take a look at him, you filthy rats. Take a look at the man who killed Abe Lincoln, the greatest man who ever lived. Look at him. Watch him get what's coming to him. Next. Left step. All right, drop your chain. Attention! Now, before we go any further here, I want you to listen to me. Because I know exactly what you're thinking. Every mother's son of you. You're figuring on whether you're going to be able to break out of here. Well, we got a little way here of putting thoughts like that out of your heads. Follow me. 
You first, Doctor. Come on, get up! Now, whenever you slops get to figuring on breaking out of here, I just want you to give a little thought to this moment. It runs all around the island. It's 75 feet wide and 35 feet deep. And you know what we keep in it? We keep pets in it. Nice little pets. We got more pets in that moat than you can count. And sometimes we feed them. Not often. Oh, no. But just for you, because I like you, I'm going to give him a little treat. Now, watch close. Prisoner, sir. Just a minute. Now you know that's quite interesting. Those are mosquito larvae. See there. But not very interesting to anyone but a medico, I'm afraid. Well, I'm also a physician, sir. No. Now I am pleased. That's Dr. Martin. Well, I, I thought that, I thought that, that as another physician, you would understand the circumstances, the obligation of a doctor to, to give aid to anyone, whoever he might be. Mr. Mudd, if you assumed you might find sympathy here, get rid of the idea. The profession you have dishonored is ashamed of you, ashamed of your membership in it. As a doctor, I may tell you that I despise you even beyond the rest of the world. It would be of no use for me to swear to you on the, on the honor of the profession we both respect that I had nothing whatsoever to do with, with the death of Mr. Lincoln. It would be of no use whatever. Sorry, sir. Master Sam. Master Sam. Oh, Buck. Master Sam. I saw her, sir. Yeah. But I was too scared this afternoon. I couldn't say nothing to you then. Oh, I knew, I knew that. Tell me, what are you doing down here? Oh, I've been here a month waiting for you, sir. You 
Yes, so you see, Miss Mudd, she told me to get on down this here man's island. So, <laughs> yeah, I uh, done got on down on it. Oh, you, you give me the first hope I've had since this, since this nightmare started. Yes, sir. I guess so. But, uh, here's some soap I brought you. What? Oh, yes, I guess I do need it. Yes, sir, but, but it's for the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes? Yes, sir. You put it on your face and hands. Oh, tonight. I know, I know, I know. Yes, sir, because there's more mosquitoes on this here man's island than I ever seen before. I know, that's why. Watch it. Huh? My home, sir. Darling, General Dewey. How do you, General? This is Judge Mabin of the District Superior Court. How do you do, Judge? Uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, the judge is a Yankee, but he's on. Uh, uh, thank you, Colonel. Uh, he's going to get Sam out of jail. Oh, but Colonel, please. Colonel. Please. Uh, won't you sit down? Let me take your things. Please sit down. Let me explain, General. At my request and for my own satisfaction, Judge Maven's gone over the whole record of the case, word by word. And the evidence produced. No civil court could hold Dr. Mudd for ten minutes. You have some sort of plan, Judge. The plan is uh, Mrs. Mudd's. No judge dare devise anything quite so uh, extreme. I explained to Judge Maven what happened to the writ of habeas corpus you obtained for Sam. The government simply laughed at it. But if a writ were served on him in, say, Key West, a civil municipality. It would be honored, wouldn't it? Of course. But Dr. Mudd's not in Key West. I know he isn't. Yet. What did I tell you? But great Scott, Mrs. Mudd. You surely wouldn't dare. General Ewing, I dare anything for my husband. And it isn't only freedom I want for him. It's exoneration, too. He's innocent. And I want them to say so to the whole world. But if we wait... Wait? Wait for what? For the government to kill my husband? That's all we've done is wait. And trust and have faith. Oh, I'm so sick of waiting. I found a way to get Sam out. Just a moment, Mrs. Mudd. Now, all I have to say is this. If Dr. Mudd should be able to deliver himself to the civil authorities in Key West, I could have a writ of habeas corpus there to be served on him. Now, under its protection, he could be brought back here. I'd reopen the case, and I feel sure, give him a far different trial the one he had at the court-martial. But, as to how Dr. Mudd is going to be able to get to Key West, well, I think I'd rather not hear. Good luck, my dear. And remember, I won't be the only Yankee who'll be praying with you. And don't let anything disturb you. I won't. Good day, gentlemen. Good day. We'll sell, pawn, mortgage, everything. We'll get enough money. Oh. You understand what this means to me, don't you? It's all that's left of our lives, Sam's and Martha's and mine. And it's only your support, your support behind us that we're asking. You can leave the escape entirely to me, sir. Within 24 hours, I'll have 5,000 of my old brigade under my command. We'll seize a war vessel or two and blow the whole dad blame prison to ashes and deliver Sam in Key West with a guard of honor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Mudd, but if you're set on such a foolhardy plan, I must withdraw from the case. But we have to do it. He's got to be free to be tried. It's the only way. Oh, don't you see? I'm sorry. The risk is too great. I got you. And if you'll take my advice, you too will abandon this mad scheme. What do you think? <laughs> I got you. We'll show these dad blame chicken hearted Yankee lawyers. Uh, you leave it to me. I'm getting tired of this. Fiddling around, fiddling around. Lawyers. Lawyers are no 
Stonewall Jackson gave me that. It's pure Toledo. And if I don't get $150 for that, I'll have the pleasure of splitting the heart of the swine that they have offered me. Let's open the door. That's me. I kind of fixed my name up a little bit to make it sound kind of nice. Yes, tonight. But how about the moat and them shards? I'm gonna have to try the bridge. But they got a guard on it, sir. Yeah, I know. Watch it. Master Sam, if I could go with you, yes, I can arrange to be the guard that's on the bridge. That's right. If you could arrange to be the guard on the bridge, we could both go together. Yes, sir. Now listen. Yes, sir. There's going to be a boat. Yes, I'm going to flash two lights. I'm going to have to swim out. Yes, sir. What's outside? Just outside. Start anything you might be sorry for, Doctor. Two, step out.
What were you doing down in that cell block? Uh, says which? I saw you. Yes, sir, told me. As you are. Left face. Forward. Tip! that boy buck on uh, the bridge he swapped with another one of them that's what i thought relieve him place him under arrest and bring him here what's up mud's out wait he's out but i don't want him back alive do you understand Post extra guards to the bridge. Notify all sentries. We'll see if we can give this Judas what the court martial should have given him. Tell him to shoot and shoot straight. Guard, watch that. No. Wait. Guard that magazine over there. Quick step. Soldier, you're under arrest. But I just... Give it yourself. Move. Take your post.
Look! you think, sir? Sergeant, with that barrage on the water, you're lucky if you've got a shark left in a hundred yards of this spot. Stop firing, you fools! You want to drive those sharks away? Keep your eyes open. I, I don't see anything down here. in toward him. Reagan, man two boats. I want that man back. Alive. You understand? Yes, sir. Boat two, number one. Number two. a little more. Get, 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 there he is, boys. Put him in. Right over here in this bunk. It's all right. There you are, Sam. Oh, darling, you're so cold. Go easy with him. Don't get him excited. Oh, my darling, you're warm. He's all right now. Everything's arranged for. You're going to have a new trial. And Martha's waiting. Martha. In Key West. Yeah. Forgot him. Oh, my Not for one little minute. I get I'll soon stop this. You stay here with Sam. No. Oh, they can't take you back again. Hi, Judas.
And then the prince leaned down and kissed the sleeping beauty on both eyes. Smack, smack. And what you suppose? What? The sleeping beauty waked up. Mama! wanted to, but, oh, sweet dear, darling, it doesn't mean forever. He'll come yet. He will. I promise you. Where's Grandpa? Oh, Robert's gone away. He's gone a long, long way away. Forever? Forever. Well, I don't know. Three, maybe, maybe four days, I guess. Marcia Sam, can I have a little bit more of that water? We ain't even heard no bugle calls. Ain't even seen nobody. No food. No nothing. I guess everybody just done run on off and left us. I reckon you're doing it good to holler again. No, I holler till I'm hoarse. Well, what you suppose happened? I don't know, Buck, maybe. Maybe just as you say that they have gone off and left us to die, maybe. Tell the captain of that ship I've got to have those supplies. Tell him I got a thousand hospital cases here and only one doctor. Tell the commandant again. I'm sorry, but I refuse to put in. Tell him he's a filthy yellow coward with my compliments. Tell him I've waited five bloody days for him to make up his lily livered soul to be a man and deliver me my medicine. And now if I don't see some action out there inside of five minutes, I'm going to turn a cannon on his bloody tub and blow it to kingdom come. Government ship or no government ship. That'll make you sleep a little. You're gonna be all right, son. Morning, Lark. Are you all right, sir? Just tired. Very tired. It's a hard job, son. Always a hard job when you don't know what to do. And got no one to do it with you. If it hadn't been for you and a couple of others who've stuck by me. Well, I... I don't want to catch it myself, sir. Hmm. That's something I can't promise you. Because I don't know. I don't know what causes yellow fever. I don't know how to cure it. I don't know how it spreads, where it comes from, or where it goes. I'm going to see the commandant. Doctor, he got it. Hey, soldier. Yes, sir. My compliments. My compliments to the commandant and tell him. Yes, sir. I can't come. Tell him I've got to go to my quarters.
Mitchell. White boss sick. He's got it too. White boss sick. He's got it too. Soldier. Soldier. Come here, help me. Come here, you fools. No, sir, white boss. No, sir. You swine, I tell you, you've got to help me up. Doctor. 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 Well? He says he can't do it, sir. He says he's scared. Scared? Whenever I get my hands on that muck's throat, imagine the hound loading my supplies on rafts and just shoving them toward the shore through that surf. Look at them. Scared to land them. Scared to touch them. Scared to tend them when they're sick. Holy mother, how long do they expect to live? Forever? Beg pardon, sir. If the commandant pleases, there's a doctor among the prisoners, Dr. Mudd. Mudd? Yes. Dr. Mudd? Come on. Open up. Doctor, I am here on a curious mission. I want your help. My help? I need it, desperately. Doctor, this island is a pest hole. It's steaming with yellow fever. The worst epidemic we've had in years. I've got 3,000 men here, soldiers and prisoners. And those that aren't dead or dying are crazy with terror. And we're all trapped here together. What's all this to me? That's what you must decide for yourself, sir. And the good Dr. McIntyre? The good Dr. McIntyre is down. Bad. You're quite right. You couldn't possibly be in a better position to tell me and my men to go straight to the devil. And no one would understand it better than I would. In your place, I'd do it myself. But in spite of that, in spite of the fact that I can promise you no reward, that I can offer you nothing but expose you to death. I want your help. Once before I was a doctor. I'm still a doctor. Thank you, Dr. Mudd. Buck. Buck, we're, we're going up in the open. Will you give me a hand, sir, please? Last straw when they heard about Dr. McIntyre's dying. They all quit. They're in the mess hall now, barricaded, guards and all. We got to do something, sir. Those patients are all alone, deserted. Have I any authority, sir? You give the orders. I'll take the responsibility, Doctor. All right, sir. Thank you. You wait here. You come with me. Aren't you afraid? Doctor, I'm scared to death. Yes, yeah, so am I. Steady! Don't come no closer, white man. Stay where you is. Us men ain't gonna come out there for nobody. I'm not gonna ask you to come out. But you're gonna listen to me. I'm just gonna tell you what you're gonna get. You're gonna get hanged, all of you. You soldiers. And you mutinied. 
You deserted your post. You shot at your officers. Can't get away with it. And here's what they're going to do to you. They're going to take you before a judge. Take you out in the courtyard and build a scaffold. And you're going to have to build it yourselves to your own scaffold. And when you get that done, you're going to do some digging. You're going to dig your own graves. And then the law is going to hang you. They're going to put a rope around your necks. And they're going to choke you. Choke you till your eyeballs pop out and your tongue swells up. You are not talk like that. No. I ain't no Yankee talking just to hear yourself talk. That's a southern man, and he mean it. Yes, sir. But for those here that want to be saved, that want to live, I got a proposition. I don't want to go near them young people, man. Do you want to hear it or not? Yes. All right. There's nobody going near those yellow fever men. But this orderly and me. But I need help outside. I need workers, colored boys, water boys. Boys that's willing to do what I say. Any of you boys that are willing to do that? I promise to save from hanging. You sound like a nice man. I don't want to go near them yellow fever boys. The white man say you don't have to. And besides, I'd rather be beside them yellow fever boys than hang if my balls popped out. Come down, White Boy. All right. Now look, I'm going to give all of you just one minute to make up your mind. Come down, White Boy. That's it. Come on, all of you. Hurry up. Now. Hurry up and don't forget. I'll keep my promise. Everybody. Come on. Come on, White Boy. Come on, all of you. Come on, all of you, boys. Come on, White Boy. Come on, all of you, boys. Back, you men begin tearing out those windows. Sash and all. I want to get some air and sunlight in this hospital. Come on, double time now. Come over here, you fellas. Look, get ready to soak these blankets. Keep them wet. I want to wrap those men up till I wash some of that fever out. Hurry up now. All right, those blankets on. Come on, you and I are going in. You think all this will do any good, sir? Oh, good. I don't know, but it'll make them comfortable, isn't it? over your faces. We're going to smash out these windows and get some air in this hospital. All right, tear them out. that window, sir. With those windows out, and it looks like a hurricane. Let it blow. Let it rain. It's cooling, isn't it? There's nothing else that'll help to blow these blasted mosquitoes away. Come on, we'll take them in the order. This one first. Feeling pretty good, Master Sam, since you done chased them mosquitoes away. The show seems a long way from Maryland. Long time. Long ago. I wonder. I wonder if Rosabelle done forgot me. Forget you after. After 12 children? It's impossible. And that Roosevelt show sure is one real woman, ain't she, Ma Sam? <laughs> <laughs> well, how's it look today? All right, I guess. What do you mean? How long do you think these supplies are going to last forever? Where's the medicine coming from two days from now? Out of the air? Steady. And how long do you think I'm going to last forever? You've got to get some sleep. You've had five days of this. You're yeah. exhausted. 
Yeah. Right out yonder, not a mile offshore. There's a ship full of supplies. And a half a dozen doctors, not country doctors, brought up on belly aches and babies, but real city doctors. And the whole United States government can't make that boat come help us. <coughs> you let me put you to bed. No! <clears throat> Sorry. I'll go to bed because... because I'm tired. Me. I need your help. Doctor, you're sick. Of course I'm sick. I got yellow jack. I'm the doctor, but I got yellow jack. Didn't you know the doctors could ever get yellow? Only doctor in the world got a thousand cases. Only doctor in the world got a thousand cases and ain't got no medicine. Won't you tell me where we're going, sir? Yeah, where we're going. Get up there. Open that door. Kick it open. morning. Still all right? Looks like I'm going to live.
Doctor, this is something I've prepared to send to Washington by special messenger today. Of course, I'm in no position to speak for our government, yours and mine. But because I do love the flag I serve and because I'm jealous of its honor, I'd... I'd like to read this letter to you. It's to the President of the United States. As Commandant of the military prison at Port Jefferson, Florida, I can testify that the final checking of the recent yellow fever epidemic was the direct result of extraordinary and unselfish courage and bravery and skill on the part of Dr. Samuel A. Mudd. On behalf of the personnel of the post, including officers and enlisted men, civilians and prisoners, I take this means of urging executive clemency for Dr. Mudd as a reward for heroism far above and beyond the demands of duty. I wrote that this morning. And every man in this island would be glad to sign it. I promise you. And I'd like to be the first. With your permission, Major. With Dr. Mudd's permission. Thank you, Sergeant. Daddy's coming home. And when he comes, he he may not look like he did when, when you last saw him, but, but don't say so. Don't look at him like that, dear. Just because his face may be old and sad and tired. And he may be thin and, and his hair. But don't notice it, dear. Just, just kiss him. Kiss his cheeks and his eyes. And his arms, and his wrists, and...
This one? Yes. That's solid silver. I know all about it. What do you want for it? I'll take its weight, a dollar more. Weigh it up. Fourteen dollars and sixty cents plus a dollar is fifteen sixty. That includes the case. I'll have to charge you two bits more for that. One bit is plenty. All right, I won't bargain with you. Now give me the address of the man who hocked it. Is he a friend of yours? Yes. Only he's dead now. I'm sorry I couldn't be there. By the time I heard about it, it was too late. It doesn't matter. There was nobody there but the children and me. You think the medical society they could have... They probably didn't know about it. Anyway, none of that matters now. While he was still alive, we hoped we'd get justice. I mean, for his sake. You know how we felt about him. But now, it's only a question of how long it will take the world to accord him the honor he deserved during his life. He ought to have a monument in every city and a park called after him and a Morton Boulevard. That might be a little too much effort. Maybe one hospital someday. One hospital? Every hospital ought to be called after him. This is what I came to bring you. Evan, how very kind of you. This was the last one. He hated to part with it. To the benefactor of mankind, the gratitude of humanity. I'm sorry I stirred everything up. I was just thinking how happy we were. It was the only time he was really happy in his life. We thought he was all through worrying about things. He was happy with a farm. You know, he won all the prizes one year. Best kept farm, most improvements, best sow. Three dollars. First admirable East. Listen to this, Lizzie. Dr. Warren and the staff of the Massachusetts General addressed a memorial to Congress. Daniel Webster supported it, and now they're going to vote me a $100,000 award. How wonderful, William. At last. I'll have to go to Washington right away. How are you going to do it? To borrow on the place, I guess. I did so want to hold on to this for the children's sake. They're so helpless. Oh, but Lizzie, you don't seem to understand. It's already passed Congress. It only has to be ratified by the Senate. The money's as good as in the bank. All our years of worry are behind us. Everything I've ever promised you will be yours with interest and love and gratitude for the patience you've displayed. This is a memorial to the President signed by 20 United States One Senators. One at the time. sent to him before he signed One what he's about to sign. Will you come in, please? Oh, do you say Mr. Pierce or Mr. President Pierce? Just Mr. President. Uh, this bill has passed both houses. It requires only your signature. This man's been waiting for years. I can't sign this yet. Now, don't look as if you lost your last friend, gentlemen. As a man, I'm entirely for you. As a lawyer, I must grant your opponent some merit. As the president, I'm forced to lean over backwards. However he may feel personally, the president of the United States must always conduct himself like cautious Charlie. That's his mission. For that, he was elected. Now, I'm going to sign this amendment, of course. But first, I want you to do one thing. I want you to bring a little suit against some Army or Navy surgeon for invading your patent. He's bound to lose. That'll establish a precedent. And these gentlemen will have to quit hollering. Yeah, but, Mr. President... I won't wish you luck. You won't need it. You're a fine man, Doctor. Believe me, I'd rather be you than President any day. Well, thank you, Mr. President. All right, Mr. President, I'll do it. But I hate to have it look as if I was trying to make the government pay to relieve wounded soldiers from pain. The government pays for the guns, don't it? Huh? <laughs> well, good day, good day. <laughs> Expelled from the American 
medical association, disowned by his fellow dentists, burned in effigy by his fellow townsmen, this avaricious little dentist, this money-grubbing little opportunist, walks in shame, alone, unhailed, period. Whatever the results of this trial, oh, and we pray that Morton will lose hands down, let this be a lesson to the future. How's this, sir? <laughs> Not bad. I think I'd make the fingers a little longer. More claw-like, more vulturesque. Yes, Mr. Greeley. Now, where was I? Oh, yes. Let this be a lesson to the future Shylocks who attempt to prey upon the misery of man. A discovery is not patentable. A discovery is not patentable. It is only where the explorer has gone beyond the domain of mere discovery and has laid hold of the new principle and connected it with some mechanical contrivance by which it acts on the material world that he can secure exclusive control of it under the patent law. The patent is invalid. But its discoverer is entitled to be classed among the greatest benefactors of mankind. Is this the same as bought by the government? Uh, yes, sir. It's the same that we sell to the government, uh, guaranteed in every respect. Is this the same as Dr. Morton's? Well, this is an ether inhaler, uh, guaranteed to work perfect, whether it's the same as Dr. Uh, What's-his-name's, I, I wouldn't know. Well, I would, because I happen to be Dr. What's-his-name, and I happen to have invented these. Oh, so you invented bottles, huh? People have been using them for a long time. They'll be very glad to know that you invented them at last. And maybe you invented the wheel, too, and the needle and thread. You know what I'm talking about. What's this hole for? To stick flowers in. Look, I sell bottles. People can keep schnapps in them or maple syrup or anything they want to for all I care. Well, you'll care when I get through with you, you dirty snuffer. Now, now, wait a minute. Trying to rob me, huh? You and Betty, did you? No, now, wait a minute. Help! Stop it! Stop it! Help! Well, you're going to get it whether you want it or not. You must rest, both for yourself and for your family. I tell you, I can't afford it, Doc. My practice has all gone to pieces. Neglected it while it was good, and now my assistants have gone and taken all the patients with them. I got so wrapped up in that ether thing. I'm so mad most of the time. I mean, all those people saying I stole their ideas from them. You know I discovered the use of ether, don't you? Of course I know it. That's what killed him, you know, that trip to New York. Was that last article of Dr. Jackson's calling him a charlatan? saying he'd stolen his discovery, bringing back all the misery of 20 years, reopening the wounds. We got him into bed, but in the middle of the night, he got up and started sorting his papers to prove Jackson was a liar. On the 15th, he seemed better. It was very hot. We went for a drive in Central Park. He insisted on holding the reins himself, even though he said they were very heavy. Suddenly, he pulled up the horses and got off to the ground and just looked into the darkness. I said, what is it, dear? I said, William, answer me. But he just smiled, as if suddenly he'd understood something at long last. Then pitched forward on his face. The papers spoke of him as the man who claimed to have discovered the use of ether. They dug up the whole nasty business. The doctor Jackson had told him how to do it. But he, Jackson, had known about it for years. Can you imagine anyone keeping a secret like that? And then they brought in poor Horace Wells' claim that he did it first. And Dr. Crawford Long's claim that he had done it four years before. Well, maybe they all did do it first. Maybe they all did discover the use of ether. I guess they did all right. Why should they lie about it? But it seems so cruel to have let people go on suffering so long after they knew how to stop it. All I know is that three months after my husband discovered anesthesia, the whole world was using it. Supper's ready, Mama. All right, dear. Come along, Edward. Won't you have still another piece of pie, Evan? Oh, I, uh... No, thank you. 
You're going to make some man very happy someday. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bryce. <laughs> My, how your father loved pie. I really think that's why he married me. Oh, Mama. He ate so much, my mother wanted to throw him straight out of the house. <laughs> oh, dear. I do declare. I do declare, Lizzie, I'm going to have to ask that young Mr. Morton to leave. He pays his board regularly, but he's just eating us out of house and home. Tonight he had three plates of soup and 12 slices of bread. Not that I counted them. Four helpings of roast beef, six potatoes, almost a whole bunch of sparrowgrass. A hat full of beans, peas, and beets, and three wedges of pie. Now, I can't do that on three dollars a week. Mrs. Bidden charges four dollars a week and does... Why, Lizzie. Honey, child. I had no idea you were fond of him. You know I don't mean half the things I say. I wouldn't ask him to leave if he ate twice as much, heaven forbid. If you didn't want me to. He's leaving anyway. Why? Now, don't tell me I indicated by so much as the slightest look or glance that... He hasn't got any money. He can't be a medical student anymore. Oh, the poor lamb. Well, there are plenty of other businesses. Maybe he'd do well in the meat business. He seems to like it. He's going to be a dentist. <laughs> oh, and he seems such a nice young man. You may not like the idea, but you're going to have a dentist in the family just the same. A dentist? I'm certainly going to miss you, Miss Lizzie. I'm certainly going to miss you, Mr. Morton. It's not going to be very cheerful in Boston. It's not going to be very cheerful here. You really mean that, Miss Lizzie? Mm -hmm. Now, don't do that. I can't help it. Oh, Miss Lizzie. If I thought you'd wait for me, I'd work so hard that in almost no time at all, I venture to say I'd be in a position to support a, not luxury maybe, but to support a family of reasonable size. Oh, William! And I know you're going to be rich and famous, and I'm going to be so proud of you, darling, and Father won't be able to talk against dentists anymore, and we'll have a big house, and while you're at the office, I'll be at home taking care of my end of things. <laughs> Elegant around here, isn't it? Oh, but this is so beautiful. Won't you try it? With pleasure. Oh, it's deliciously comfortable, William. One would be reluctant to leave it. I hope patients feel that way about it. Now, just lean back. <laughs> open your mouth. Uh -uh. Will you open your mouth? Uh -uh. Don't be a child. Ah! What are you trying to do? Ruin my business? What are you trying to do? Ruin me? I've bored bigger holes in children. They smiled while I they did. They must it. have been half witch. Open your mouth. No. Open your mouth and keep your trap shut. Huh? Why don't you try and show a little courage? This won't hurt a bit. Ow! If I could lie like you, I'd take a fortune telling. Now open your mouth. Ah! Uh, don't be in a hurry. I'll be with you in just a moment. Uh, 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 uh. Now you sit down. I'll be with you in a moment. Uh -oh. Be a man. Now. Are you going to have another piece of pie, dear? Hmm? Oh, no, thank you, Lizzie. Are you sick? Huh? What? What are you frowning about? Dental profession. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. It can't be helped. But they yell so, Lizzie. It's blood curdling. It gets on your nerves. You can't put in a nice inlay like you did in dental college with them screaming bloody murder in your face or trying to bite you. It's impossible. Unless you're deaf or a demon or somebody that likes to see people suffer. Why don't you try stuffing up your ears? There ought to be some way to... Like your leg goes to sleep sometimes when you're resting your elbow on... 
This would be pretty hard to put your head to sleep. There ought to be a way to desensitize a nerve. Say, didn't Dr. Jackson say something about that one night after supper? I don't remember, dear. Somebody had the toothache. And... Oh, yes, it was Horace Wells. His face was That's all right. And Jackson out. said the only way to desensitize a nerve was what? I don't remember. Oh, some kind of drops or something. It was supposed to help some. Why don't you go and ask him? Because I despise him so, the sarcastic old blowhard. Be better than hearing people yell. I don't think it worked anyhow. I remember Horace said... Yes, but you're not sure. You might try to find something for that, too. <laughs> Is Professor Jackson in? Sorry, sir. He's not at home. Thanks. But you might try Costello, sir. Oh. Thanks. Professor Jackson, how Why are you? don't you look what you're doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Say, do you remember what you used on Horace Wells the night he had the toothache? Do I know you? Yes, W.T.G. Morton. I was a student of yours at Harvard Medical. His face was swollen out and you Oh, said yes, that. Morton, of course. And as I remember, you were rather dull student. Well, you didn't keep us in stitches either. I suppose now you're a successful physician. No, I didn't finish. I didn't have enough money. Well, then you shouldn't have gone in for medicine in the first place. Well, the cankers of our profession is the number of youths without funds or proper background who try to worm their way into it for the rich rewards they imagine it holds. Thanks. I'm glad to see the years haven't changed you. How are you getting along? Pretty well. Rum punch. Yes, sir? Could be a lot better. If there were only some way to deaden the pain a little. They get in your chair and they start to yell, and the first thing you know... You, you say your a... chair? Are you a barber now? No, no, a dentist. Oh, you say your patients yell? They certainly do. Well, the remedy for that is very simple. It's been known since the 15th century. They still do it at county fairs. You merely provide a small orchestra, and when your patient screeches, you out screech him. I suppose you think that's very funny. I see your sense of humor hasn't improved. Neither of your jokes. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> oh, well. Have you tried oil of cloves? I've tried oil of cloves, I've tried camphor, I've tried peppermint, I've tried whiskey, I've tried brandy, I've tried gin. None of those are any good. There's only one way to desensitize the nerve, that's to freeze it. You might fill your patient full of ice. What with? What do I know? <laughs> the funnel. I thought you were serious. Well, of course, there is another way of producing coal, that's by evaporation. You might try something with a low boiling point. But I didn't come here to deliver a lecture on chemistry. Bartender, give me a drink. Let me buy you one. Well, unaccustomed as I am to imbibing with dentists. What has a low boiling point? Oh, one of the ethers, I suppose. You might get yourself some uh, ethyl chloride drops. Uh, that's all the shop I want to talk. I think that's it. What's ethyl chloride? What's ethyl chloride? He goes to school with me for years, and now he doesn't know what ethyl chloride is. Morton, you are the living proof that plowboys belong behind the horse. Well, what is it? What's what? Ethyl chloride. C2H5Cl, known to the corn doctors as chloric ether. Where can I get some? Well, you might try a feed store, and if you can't get it there, then you might try Burnett's Pharmacy. My pupil. Here's to you, Professor. The same to you, Doctor. My pupil. Yes? I want to get some ether, please. Do you have to have it tonight? I'd like to. Oh, well. Hold it there, Shelley. Do you want chloric or sulfuric? What? C2H5Cl or C2H5O, C2H5. Now, just a minute. Do you want it for corns or asthma? Why don't you come in in the morning? Give me a bottle of each. An ounce? A pint. A pint. Hold it, Charlie.
that you, William? Yes, dear. I'll be up in a little while. All right, dear. I had two drinks, two small drinks, no one or less. You won't make it any better by lying about it, you reek of cheap liquor. Now get up, I'll help you. Oh, you ask for any help. What's the matter with you, Lizzie? You crazy? Get up! Why should I get up? I'm not down any place. Then what are you doing on the floor? Who's on the floor? Where's the floor? Get up! Lizzie, I tell you, I've not been drinking. I had two small drinks. Why should I lie to you? If I'd had three drinks or four drinks or even five drinks, I'd just assume. <gasps> drunk when I came in here last night? Oh, you're the young man who wanted the ether. That's right. Would you say that I was drunk at the time? Not particularly. What do you mean, not particularly? I had two drinks, two with Professor Jackson down at Costello's. I came in here cold sober, went straight home, and at midnight my wife found me rolling around on the floor. Oh, your liver must be torpid. You see, the poisons are normally dissipated through the liver. But when this organ becomes congested, now I have here... Yes, well, I happen to have been a medical student myself. Right now, I'm a practicing dental surgeon. Oh. My liver works like a buttered eagle. And if anybody was drunk in here last night, it wasn't me. Now, there are two things possible. Either I had a stroke, which I don't appear to have had, or somehow that bottle of ether that I found empty this morning... Was... Which one was it? Sulfuric, I think. Oh, well, there's your answer. You don't have to go any further. The fumes of sulfuric ether are extremely noxious. We have to keep it tightly sealed. And I'm always telling my assistant. If I've told him once, I've told him a thousand times. I've said, Charlie... Well, that solves that mystery. Although I don't suppose my wife will ever believe it. Thanks. Do you want another bottle? I should say not. Wait a minute. Give me another bottle of it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Wells, how are you? What are you doing in Boston? I just got in from Hartford. Come in. I have something very interesting to tell you. What is it? You remember when we were students, we used to try to figure how to pull a tooth without pain? I'm still trying. I just got a bottle down the Forget it. That's what I came to tell you about. I've made the most important discovery in the world. Fine. 
I can extract teeth or fill them or do anything I like with them without any pain whatsoever. Oh. Absolutely, that's what I'm here for. I'm giving a demonstration at Harvard Medical at 10.30. I want you to lend me a key and act as my assistant. Well, that's wonderful. Well, how do you do it, or is that your secret? I wish it were my secret, but the stuff is so well known you can't stop them from recognizing it. I'll just have to be the father of painless dentistry and let it go at that. Well, what is it? Nitrous oxide. Laughing gas. Laughing gas? You mean like they use at the county fairs? I do, for the entertainment of the yokels. That's where I got the idea. I saw this lout leaping around and making a fool of himself and laughing his head off. And all the time he had a gash that long in his shin, he got falling off the platform. He never even knew it. He hadn't felt it. Very interesting. But how can you work on them when they're laughing? But they're not laughing. I give them a little more and they fall asleep. But they must be half asphyxiated. That can't be very healthy. I had an experience just Naturally, last night. Naturally, you have to be careful. How many times have you done it? Four times. You're not ready for any demonstration at Harvard Medical. What if it didn't work? It has to work. I'm not going to stand around and wait till somebody else does this first. If you don't want to help me, I'll borrow a key from someone else. I'll help you on one condition. We go by Dr. Jackson's first, and he says it isn't dangerous. What's that old Morse head know about it? He doesn't know any more about it than I do. Poppycock. What do you mean, poppycock? I tell you I've done it. And I tell you that you're endangering the lives of the fools who trust you. Certainly you can render a man unconscious by asphyxiating him or drowning him or hitting him on the head with a darning. That's no discovery. Henry Hill Hickman went all through that. Priestley found laughing gas and Humphrey Davy tried all that stuff 50 years ago. Faraday experimented with every type of inhalant he could lay his hands on. In the end, all these men abandoned the idea. Do you expect to succeed where the greatest scientists in the world have failed? Discoveries are still being made, aren't they? They're not being made by any half-educated schoolboys. You better give up this nonsense before you kill somebody. And that goes for you too, Morton. Go back to your tooth yanking and leave science to the scientists. Thanks. Nevertheless, at 10.30 this morning at Harvard Medical School, I will pull a tooth totally without pain by the use of the Wells method. The Wells method. The half-asphyxiated method. Now, young gentlemen, we are to assist at a very interesting experiment. Dr. Horace Wells of Hartford, Connecticut, and his assistant are about to demonstrate the Wells method of painless extraction on your fellow student, Homer Quinby, who has volunteered to be the subject. Are we nearly ready? Yes, sir. Then if you'll kindly step up here, Homer. Yes, sir, Dr. Warren. Don't let them give you too much of it. No, sir, Professor Jackson. <laughs> Sit right here, Homer. Now, this isn't going to hurt you a bit, Homer. <clears throat> you just sit back. Well, don't you give me too much of that stuff. Don't you worry about that. Uh, I think we're just about ready. Now, open your mouth, please. <laughs> now, breathe deeply. Keep on breathing, Homer. Breathing. Again. Once more. <laughs> it's all very funny, but they have to kill it. Now behave yourself, Homer. Homer, behave yourself. your mouth and breathe deeply. <laughs> what are you trying to do? Kill that boy? I know what I'm doing. Maybe he's had enough, Doctor. Yes. All right. Hold his head, please.
because he didn't get enough of it. I wanted to give him more until that old mealy mouth. I tell you, this is the greatest discovery in the world. I'm the father of painless dentistry. I can extract teeth or pull them or do anything I want. Take it a... easy, take it easy. Maybe all you say, but you've still got to experiment. You've got to try it out little by little. You've got to creep before you can walk. I tell you, I've done it four times without a failure. All right, I'll mix up some of this stuff. Go get me a cat or a dog or a horse or a lion and I'll show you. I'll get you a rabbit. You'll learn something. I'll be very glad to, Horace. Believe me. Is anybody in? Terrible pain, dearie. Some faker broke my tooth and then couldn't yank it. Could you do anything for me, dearie? Come in. I suppose it'll hurt. Something terrible. It isn't going to hurt a bit. Come in. pain whatsoever. The tooth's gone, she didn't move a muscle. You shouldn't have done that, Horace. What are you talking about? This is the greatest discovery that... She's a mighty funny color. That doesn't mean anything. They turn all kind of colors. She'll be all right. I tell you, this is the greatest... How long has this woman been unconscious? I don't know. I didn't notice the time. She'll be all right. Shut up. Get a doctor. Quick. There's one at the end of the hall. Get some smelling salts and some brandy and hurry up. Let's get her so close to it. Give me the three drops of straighten. Yes, Doctor. Oh, be careful, you dumb dentist. The salts again. Yes, Doctor. How is she? I don't know yet. I'll never experiment with human life again. So help me God. She doesn't live. You won't have the chance to. I'll put you both in prison. The idea of a couple of half-baked dentists. Just a minute. <sighs> this is wonderful, dearie. I never felt a thing. Didn't take a second, did it?
a good old man. Come on, Nick. I won't hurt you. Oh, there you are. All right, old man. Come on, Nick, old boy. Come on. Again, I suppose. Who's drunk? Listen, for heaven's sake, what's the matter with what's you? What's the matter with you would be more to the point. You stay away from dinner, you don't even send word it was a baby's birthday, and you don't even remember, and now, in the middle of the night, I find you groveling I've around... I've had enough irritations today without standing any more from you when I come home tired and weary. I just want to catch that blasted dog. What are you doing with that dog? What have you got on that handkerchief? Oh, I'll protect you, Nick. William Thomas Green Morton, if you harm a hair of this dog's head, this is my dog, you know. I'll go straight home to Mother. Is that a promise? <gasps> you brute! Talking that way to the mother of your children! <sighs> you may regret this night, William Thomas Green Morton. Can't talk that way to us, Nick. Talking that way to the mother of his children. Because after all, Daddy gave it to me anyway. by himself when I was asleep. Take a good look at that, Lizzie. That's the first thing. First. To Brewer Stevens and Cushing on Washington Street. Good, you didn't mention my name. No, dear. What's that? New sign. Completely painless extractions or double your money back. Oh, let me do it. We keep buying it at different places until I get my patent. It's bound to cause a lot of talk with me. Every dentist in town will try and find out what I'm using. What are you going to tell them when they ask you? I figured out a pretty good name. Did you ever hear of the river Lethe in mythology? I never even heard of mythology. It was the stream of oblivion that banished all earthly sorrows. Lethean. 
But are you sure it will work, William? Why, of course it'll work, Lizzie. I've tried it on myself I don't know how many times. And on the goldfish, and on a cat, and on another cat. But not on Nick. Not on Nick, but if I could have caught him. Really be rich. How can we help it, Lizzie? I've got the dental business right by the nose. I've applied for a patent. Either they get their license for me or they go out of business. I can do things in dentistry that have never been done before. For instance, the loot. Now, there's a way of crowning teeth with a loot that's wonderful. But it's so painful, nobody's ever been able to stand it. All right? I can use the loot. And consider impactions, the horror Brilliant. of the business. Well, huh? Oh. Come right in, sir. You guarantee twice the money back if I feel anything? I do, sir. Step right in. I'll take $10 of that bet. You'll never regret it. Have a seat. What's this thing? Uh, that is the lithium, my friend. That is what kills the pain. I don't like the smell of it. Nevertheless, you'll be grateful for it. Now the hat, and if you don't mind... Look out, there's a very delicate violin. I'll take the best care of it. Double my money back if I feel anything? Guaranteed. Now the towel. Now, let's have a look at the tooth, please. Ah! ah! That's it. A few moments, it'll be just a memory. Double my money back if I feel Double it. your money back if you feel anything. Now, if you'll just put this end in your mouth and inhale deeply for a few moments. What happens then? You will then sink into a gentle slumber, a sort of catnap, from which you will awake without pain and without the tooth. On the level? On the level. It's a little invention of my own now. You hold that, please. Mm. That end in your mouth. Inhale deeply. No, no. <laughs> Not at me. Just suck it in. Now. Now again. Now, don't you begin to feel a little bit drowsy? No. Well, then, again. Double my money back. Double your money back. Begin to feel a little, uh... Here they come, boys! Here they come! They're coming in the window! Ready, aim, fire! He didn't seem crazy when he came in. Maybe it affects people in different ways. You're sure you got ether, sulfuric ether? Of course I did, dear. Here's the bill. <laughs> well, you're all through. When you told me to try ether the other night, I got a bottle of sulfuric ether. I told you to try chloric ether. Haven't you any memory at all? You go fooling around with sulfuric ether and you blow your head off. Well, I can put myself to sleep with it. What for? How did you do it? By inhaling it. I wanted to see if I could extract teeth with it. I was sure I could. I'm still sure I can. I know it's just around the corner, but I'm stuck. Something went wrong. I want you to help me out and I'll pay you for your help. My regular fee is $500. I haven't got $500, but I'll tell you what I'm prepared to do. Here's a 10% interest in my patent, if it's worth anything. What are you patenting? The use of lithium. I, that's what I'm calling it, so that people won't find out the secret. I hereby assign to Dr. Charles T. Jackson one-tenth of my interest in this discovery for his assistance in its perfection. 
If I make $500 on this, I'll die of a syncope. <laughs> now, what is this deep problem, Professor? Well, the ether's been working perfectly ever since I started. And then this morning, I gave some to a patient and he jumped out the window. <laughs> there goes my $500. Have you a sample of your ether? Yes, sir. Where did you get this? Brewer, Stevens, and Cushing on Washington Street. The trouble with you is you can't remember anything. I told you to go to Burnett's. That's the only place in town where you can get highly rectified ether. Highly rectified. Paste that in your hat. <laughs> this is cleaning fluid. You mean that was the trouble? That was the problem, Professor. Thank you, Doctor. You'll be a rich man for this. You wouldn't care to settle for $50 cash, would you? Thank you just the same, Doctor. Are you sure you got the right one this time? Lizzie? I'm as sure, Lizzie, as anyone can be sure of anything. Hey. Well, well, I'm glad to see you. And I'm not glad to see you. I'll have my coat and fiddle, please, and no horsing around. Won't you let me explain? I'll have no explanation, thank you. Just give me my instrument. Won't you let me have it repaired for you? What are you talking about? Come in and let's talk it over. I will not. You know where I've been for the last eight hours? In the junk, charged with drunkenness. Me, who has never touched anything stronger than sassafarella. Now, give me my fiddle and don't try any pranks. How's your tooth? I'll take care of that. Will you listen to me, please? No. All right, there's your fiddle. What did you do to that I'm violin? I'm gonna have you arrested and put... You keep no, away from no, me no, now. No, no, I'm gonna have you put in jail. No, you no, You keep no. away from me now. I just want you to smell it to convince you I gave you the wrong mixture this morning. Well, try it on somebody else. I don't want to try it on you. I just want you to smell it to be sure it isn't the same. You remember what it smelled like this morning? Now remember till the day I die. Did it smell anything like that? <clears throat> exactly. Well. It must be drying off. Actually, there's no similarity at all. Smell it now. It smells the same to How me. How can you say it smells the same? Don't you notice the faint odor of peaches? Peaches? Yes, peaches. Can't you smell that? Peaches. Oh, I'm what sorry. are you doing? Look out there. Peaches. Where do you get the smell of peaches? It'll evaporate in no time. Peaches. Peaches. I don't notice any peaches. It smells more like, uh, like, uh, Why don't you sit down? Don't you start anything now. No, no, no. There. Don't you start anything now. You're the most suspicious man I ever saw. If you think I care anything about your tooth, you're crazy. All I want to know is, does this smell like peaches or pears? Now, give me your answer like a man. Pears. No. There you are. Sawed his leg off without his feeling. Lizzie. What is it, dear? If I could make this sleep last, say, 10 or 15 minutes longer. Oh, well, that's too much to hope for. No, it isn't. I tell you, I can do it. You mean fill teeth? Nothing to do with teeth. I got it. For sure. Hey! I can. I'm sure I can. <laughs>
just for dinner, Roberts. He's late. The doctor sends all his apologies, madam, and for guests, but regrets that he will not be home for dinner. But he just came in. He sent word, madam, through the coachman. Thank you, Roberts. Very good, madam. How do you feel now? I feel terrible. And you know something else? You know how long you were under this time? I really don't, Jeff. Nineteen minutes, and I jabbed you every 15 seconds with this. Counselor, I'm getting a feel like a pin cushion. Come on, we'll go right down and see him now. Get a bite to eat on the way. There you are. You've been dodging me as long as you're going to you and your new discoveries. Oh, will. Go down and get me a cab. I'll join you in a moment. Now, what is it? You swindled me. I'd be a little more careful of my verbs if I were you, Professor. I use any verbs I like, and that goes for adverbs and adjectives. You swandangled me into accepting 10% of this lethean or whatever you call it. You wanted $500. You're going to get much more. What are you complaining about? You didn't reveal its possibilities to me. You pretended to be a poor little dentist trying to get along. And when I suggested ether, you... You suggested chloric ether drops. That didn't work. Maybe I did, but... That's what gave you the idea. Did it give you the idea? I've known all about sulfuric ether for years and why you should come along and profit by my discovery. The only trouble with you, Professor, is that you're a little bit cracked in the head. You did not discover ether narcosis. I did. Now, is there anything else? I'll have 25% of that patent I signed. Oh, by Joseph, I'll... Well, you better take it up with Joseph, because as far as I'm concerned, you're already getting more than you deserve. I could have gone to any chemist in the city to find out what I wanted to know. It happened I came to you. That is your ultimatum? That means what I think it means, it is. Very well, sir. Yes, sir. We'll see. We certainly shall. You know, this could go on all night. I'm going down to the Massachusetts General to ask Professor Warren to try the lethean. You want to come along? You mean in a surgical case? Don't you know the difference between a serious operation and yanking a tooth? You'll kill somebody yet with this murderous nonsense of yours, as sure as my name is Jackson. Then I take it you don't want to come along. Come along? If you even mention my name to Professor Warren as co-discoverer... Then make up your mind. Are you in or out or on the fence? You'll find out, young man. All right. You'll see. All right, I'll see. Yes, but Professor Warren is performing an emergency operation. Then I'll wait. You don't seem to understand that after an operation, a surgeon is completely innovated, exhausted. All the more reason. My dear Dr. Martin. Martin. Uh, Martin. As Professor Warren's assistant, part of my duty is to shield him to the best of my ability from the many well-meaning, well, I won't say cranks, but let me say uh, amateur inventors who come here every day with every kind of goo and gimcrack for every purpose imaginable. Now, only yesterday... But you don't understand. I... My method's being used by all my assistants on hundreds of people all day long. In dentistry, my dear sir. But what has dentistry to do with medicine? But here's the living proof. I... It was the night of September 30th. I was in excruciating yes, I pain. know you told me all about that when you first came in. Now, if you will be so good as to uh, write to uh, Professor Warren, you will very probably receive an answer. Thank you. Uh, you're entirely welcome. I was in excruciating yes, Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Yes.
Not that one. Big one. No! Head. There. How do you feel, old man? Hi. Uh Hi. -huh. Uh -huh. Parts. It's a bad part. I'll do it as fast as I can. Uh -oh. Wedge, try biting on this. Helps a little sometimes. Uh -huh. Now! Certainly, Professor Warren. Smelling salts, ammonium carbonate. Professor Warren, I've been waiting to see you. If you'll listen to me, never again will you have to go through what you've just gone through in there. As God is my judge, I swear by all that's holy, you can operate without pain. I do it every day, for any length of time you want. Why, only tonight I had this man out for 19 minutes. He's still out. Yes, but that What's was What's your name? W.T.G. Morton, a dentist. Oh, yes. Didn't you take part in that fiasco at the Harvard Medical School? I did. Are you proposing I use that same remedy? Well, what I'm proposing is something entirely different. It's been thoroughly tried out, tested and proved. It cannot fail and will not fail. I'm sorry it took a moment. They were using it on the patient. Hold his head up. Be here Friday morning at 10 o'clock and bring you a bag of tricks. And you mean you'll try it? I'll try it on my first operation. I don't know how to thank you, Professor Warren. You don't have to thank me because I don't think it's going to work. But someday, somebody's going to find something. That must come. Now set him up. That's better, old man. And when that somebody comes along, I want to be there to open the door for him. It was the night of September 30th. I was an excruciating pain. So were a lot of other people. Everybody kept asking where you were, and Mrs. Burroughs leaned over and said, I know exactly how it feels, dear. And, of course, everybody knows that her husband is the biggest soap in Boston. I never had such an evening. And, of course, I couldn't understand a word that really Consul said, and the mayor's wife kept looking at the silver as if she thought it was stolen. And then the sherbet came in ahead of a fish. That must have been terrible. And for the finale, you really came in looking as if you'd been rolling in the gutter. I guess it was kind of dusty at the hospital. They're going to try it out Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Try out what? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Just think, Lizzie. It won't hurt anymore. Surgeons will be able to take their time. They'll be able to do things that have been impossible up to now. And people will choose operations willingly instead of waiting till it's too late. But suppose it doesn't work, William. And, and people hear about it. Won't it hurt your business? It will work. Anyway, that's the risk you have to take. But why? Why must you take that risk? You've made a wonderful success. You have helped so many people already. Why endanger that? Did you ever see an amputation? Something special today? The old man's gonna try another painless operation. Oh. I'll give you two to one for four bits. I'll give you three to one. Who asked you to horn in? I'll give you ten to one. Who said that? I did. And I'll take all you've got. What do you know? Hurry up, will you? I promise that at eight and it's ten after nine. Hold your horses, will you? It's only nine after. Of it. Oh, Dr. Morton, just a moment, please. Not now. I'm just going to tell this is a matter of the greatest importance. What is it? What is it? About those loops. Do I crimp the crown a little first or bind it entirely with the loop? Dr. Morton, about those additional offices. Don't bother me with things like that, will you? I've got something else on my mind. What did he say? 
He didn't. Everything ready? We've got exactly 30 minutes. 31. Inhaler's in here. Half full. Is it tightly stoppered? Because if it should happen Certainly to leak on the is. way. I'd better take a look at it myself. I tell you it is. Beautiful. Now you can wrap it up again. What is it now? Uh, Dr. Morton, there's a Dr. Horace Wells to see you. He said he Yes, I wrote to him, but not now. Tell him, tell him anything you like. Oh, yes, sir. I'm very sorry, Dr. Wells. Hello, Horace. I'm glad to see you. I wrote to you because I wanted you to do some field work for me. I think you can make yourself a lot of money. Can you come back and see me tomorrow morning? I was here yesterday. Oh, you were? I'm sorry, but I've been so terribly busy. I came as a patient. I said I wanted some work done, and I asked them to give me the Morton method. Well, what about it? You stole it from me, like stock and barrel. You're just using it differently. Don't talk like a child, Horace. I'm using something entirely different. I'm sorry you feel this way. You'll be sorrier still. I'll never be sorrier than I am at this moment, Horace. All right, let's get out of here. Why, you dumb... Look out. Can't be helped now. If you use one of the regular ones... Twenty-seven minutes left. Twenty-eight. You understand the risks involved in this experiment, Mr. Abbott? And you give your full consent? I do. Thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. The patient is ready, Professor Warren. He fully consents to the new experiment. Is Dr. Morton here? <laughs> he doesn't seem to be, does he? Well, we'll give him a couple of minutes. Count the instruments. I beg your pardon? I said count the instruments. Personally, I'm just as glad. I don't care to see medicine invaded by dental practice. I echo your sentiments with enthusiasm, Doctor. There are 117 instruments, Professor Warren, the same amount we brought in. Strap the patient down. We were gathered here today, you to witness, I to perform an experiment in which I had, if not confidence, at least a grain of hope. We were to try a method advocated by a young dentist of this city, Dr. Morton. It seems that Dr. Morton is otherwise engaged. Ah! <laughs> hurry, hurry, hurry! Ah! One minute past. No, it isn't. It's only... Don't say it or I'll strangle you. Quiet. Silence. This is not a minstrelsy, gentlemen. I doubt that the patient is enjoying your laughter. I'll work as fast as I can, Mr. Rabbit. The less you move or jerk or scream, the better it will be for us both. I'm going to hurt you considerably. If I can offer you any consolation, it is that pain carries no memory. You will forget it. Hurry up! Hold his head, John. Thank you. All right, John. Yes, sir. Wait! <laughs> This operation seems to be accompanied by an unusual amount of levity. Not that I exactly blame you. <laughs> no more, gentlemen. Please. Well, sir, your patient is ready. Thank you, sir. So am I. Don't be afraid. You don't have a thing to worry about. It was the night of September 30th. I was in excruciating pain, but agonizing. I ain't afraid. Just breathe in deeply. That's right. Keep on breathing. Dr. 
Warren. Your patient is ready. Thank you. Will he feel this? He won't feel anything. Hold his head. That will not be necessary. The bell pull. Thank you. Pinch it. Our sponge. Now the next one. Can you hear me, Abbott? Yes, sir. Did you feel any pain? Huh? I said, did you feel any pain? Oh, when? When? Gentlemen, this is no humbug. <laughs> Pretty. Very pretty indeed, Doctor, but I think the Professor Warren has forgotten a little rule of the medical society. Of course. That we shall see him about and remind him of. I'm proud of you too, William. More than you will ever know. And if I haven't always appreciated exactly what you've been doing, it's only because I didn't understand. I hope you'll forgive me. Oh, but there's nothing to forgive, Lizzie. I'm the one who needs forgiveness. It can't have been much fun to have a husband who always reeks of chemicals or works all night and never comes home, forgets dinner parties and birthdays and everything else a husband ought to remember. As if any of that mattered. Thank you, Lizzie. Anyway, it's all over now. They've got their painless operations. I can get back to work. And the first thing you need is a good night's sleep. I think that's a very noble thought. Why does it matter so long as it works? It matters very much indeed. Enormously. The principle involved is basic. Permit this one exception and our doors are wide open to every form of quackery and charlatanism. And we took our Hippocratic Oath? My dear sir, Dr. Morton is a dentist. He is not bound by the Hippocratic Oath. He doesn't have to share his discoveries with others. Dentists all have secrets and they don't share them. They're not obligated to. Nor are we obligated to use their secrets. This man wants our endorsement for the purpose of making money. Already he's received columns of free advertisement on the front page of every newspaper, where no dentist has ever been before. Now he wants more limelight, a graver operation, more notoriety to further the sale of his patent remedy. It's called an interview. The fat one's from the New York Herald. He came all the way. Are you amputing the right or the left leg? The right leg above the knee. You're using the regular lithium the same as you use in your office? There is only one lithium. Do you anticipate any pain, doctor? Where there is lithium, there can be no pain. You expect a distinguished audience. Everybody will be there. Are you the co-discoverer? Mr. Frost's contribution has been invaluable. He was the first patient on whom I operated. And he's offered himself since for countless experiments. I cannot thank him enough. It was the night of September 30th. That was an excruciating pain. There is no time, Evan. I really have to go. Thank you, gentlemen. Madam. Thank you. Remarkable. Thank Good day. You. Good day, gentlemen. Good day, doctor. Good day, doctor. No, 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 it's mine, it's entirely mine. I merely allow Morton to use it in his dental business. But the papers distinguish it. Thank you, Sidlow, you don't believe what you read in the papers. I'll have something to say about that. Card, please. Don't miss without your card, gentlemen. Came to me of his own free will. He ran the risk of ridicule and injury to his business. Don't you think the odds are worth it? From the pinnacle of your generosity, Professor Warren, from the loftiness of your own viewpoint, you're apt to overlook the meanness and avariciousness of these little people. <laughs> You mean you intend to ignore the protest of your colleagues in the society, the men who put you in charge of this hospital? You know very well that I can't. I only wish I could. What do you want me to do, ask him what this stuff is? That's all. Nothing more. And if he won't tell us? In that case, we shall have to operate in the good old-fashioned way. After all, people have been operated on for centuries without any assistance from the dental profession. Dr. Morton is here, Professor Warren. Ask him to come in here for a moment. By all means. Will you step in, Dr. Morton? Uh, 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 just the doctor, oh, if you please. You, you wanted to see me, Professor Warren? A very disagreeable situation has arisen, Dr. Morton. 
My colleagues at the Massachusetts Medical Society have protested against our operation this afternoon. What? These gentlemen are their delegates. As you probably know, Mr. Morton, physicians may not use nor prescribe patent medicines, the ingredients of which they ignore. In other words, they think you're trying to make money out of your stuff. I don't care whether you do or not. My only interest lies in the fact that it works. You had me worried for a moment. Believe me, gentlemen, I've never had the slightest intention of making money out of this. Lethion is yours, freely and in perpetuity. Not only your property, but that of all other hospitals and charitable institutions in this country and in all other countries. That's very generous of you, Mr. Morton. But I'm not sure you quite understood what I said. Physicians may not use nor prescribe patent medicines, the ingredients of which they ignore. Unfortunately, we still ignore the ingredients of your mixture. Of course, you can understand why I can't tell you that, can't you, Professor Warren? It's the secret of my business, the one advantage I have over my rivals. If I were to tell you what lithium was, in no time at all, everybody would be using it. Would that be such a catastrophe? I'm afraid it might be for me. You see, my patent hasn't been granted yet. It's still pending. Maybe if you'd use the lithium this way for a little while, why, later, after my patent had been granted... You could sell it for more money. What? Why, you stuffy little... Morton. You've been splitting Morton. fees and robbing your patients so long as you... Stop it! The ethics of our profession have done much more good than harm. They don't happen to fit this case. That is regrettable, but there's nothing more to be said. I thank you for your good intention. You mean you're going to continue to let people be tortured when it isn't necessary? That's a very high-handed interpretation to put on the matter, my friend. No. We will share the blame, Dr. Morton. You and I. Make the patient ready. Yes, sir. I shall operate in the usual way. Yes, sir. I'm terribly, terribly sorry. It isn't as bad as it sounds, sir. Some gentleman has made a new discovery, and it doesn't hurt anymore. That's right. It doesn't hurt anymore. Now, or ever again. 